Hi, and welcome back to the Power BI Custom Visuals course. And in this module, we're going to be looking at the Brick Chart by MAQ Software. Now, the Brick Chart is a pretty simple visual in that what it does is it has a hundred independent squares that are colored based on the percentage of values that's breaking down by each category that you have. So on the right hand side, you're actually seeing different manufacturers and the value that you provide, whether it be sales or quantity or whatever it may be, the percentage of each of those values that it takes up are the number of squares that are going to be highlighted or colored in the scenario. So the idea here is it's designed really to help you identify the best or worst performers and that the ones that have the most squares are the better performers. The ones that have the least number of squares are the worst performers. So it's a pretty simple visual. Uh, we're actually going to go take a quick look and see how this one works. Again, this one's designed by MAQ Software. Let's walk you through exactly how you can use the brick chart. All right, so in this example, we're going to start by pulling in some data. And the data that we're going to be pulling in is related to the amount of students that watch particular courses. And these are on-demand training courses. This isn't real data, but it's kind of fun to look at the amount of people that take certain kinds of courses. So I'm going to go up to the Get Data section inside of the Power BI desktop. And we're going to select that we want to pull in data from Excel. And the data set that we want to use is this one here called Training Course Activity. So I'll select Training Course Activity and choose Open to use this visual. Then we're going to select with inside of this Excel workbook, the spreadsheet here called Completed Courses. I'll select that one. Pretty simple little data set here, not a whole lot to it. But we should be able to see once we bring this in that the Power BI course is the most popular course that we have. And we should be able to see that based on the data here, but also when we bring in the brick chart. So I'll go ahead and hit load here to bring this into my Power BI data model. You'll see it's going to load it into my model here. And once it's loaded in, we can then go pull in the visual that we want to use for this example. I'm going to go pull this from the marketplace by going up to the very top here. I'll select from marketplace. And once I select marketplace, this will launch open the dialog box where I can search for the visual that we want to use here. In this case, we want to use the brick chart. So I'll type in brick here and do a quick search. And you can see the brick chart by MAQ software it should be the first one that pops up. I'll go ahead and hit add to add this into our visualizations pane. And we'll see once we get this added, it's a pretty simple visual to work with. I'm going to go ahead and bring this into the design surface and tell you what, I'm also going to bring in a regular table so we can look at the data in a table format. And in the table format, I'll go ahead and bring in the course and the active user so we can see how many people are taking these courses. I can increase the font size of this some if I wanted to. So maybe I want to bump this up so it's a little easier to read. Just a tad, there we go. And then I'll bring into the brick chart. I'll bring the same elements into it. I'm going to bring in the course as the category, and I'll bring in the active users as the value. So I can see these are the users that are taking this particular course. And you can, of course, make this larger, smaller, whatever you want. You can also see that cross highlighting does work with this. If I were to select something like the advanced DAX course and maybe introduction to SSIS, I could compare just those two if I wanted to. And you'll also notice there's a nice tooltip that appears above the colors that you're selecting. So it's kind of nice interaction here. The more I select, the more I can see within inside the brick chart. Or if I just want to look at it as is, you can do that as well. Now, I did notice that there's no cross highlighting when you select the brick chart itself. So when you select within the brick chart, it doesn't actually cross highlight or cross filter anything else. So any kind of cross filtering or cross highlighting you want to do is going to have to come from the other visuals into the brick chart. That part does work. So I can select these individual ones here and it filter the visual, but uh, you cannot select with inside the brick chart to see other items filtered. You can, however, move things around. So you got the title up here. You have a legend up here. You can move those things around. If I select the brick chart and go over to the format paintbrush, inside the format paintbrush, I can tell it that I want to move the legend. You can see there are several different positions. There's, I think, nine different positions you can choose from on where the legend will uh, live. I might move it over to the left here. I kind of like it over in the left side here. And then maybe I'll bump up the legend a few notches here so it's a little easier to read. And then, of course, you can resize the chart based on that. You can also turn off the title if you wanted to. That turns off the title of the legend. You can even turn off the title of the actual chart itself if you wanted to, if most of these things were self-explanatory. I'm going to actually put the legend back on, uh, the title for the legend back on, so we can see that here. You can even change the name of the legend title. So if you want to change this from saying courses to something else, you could add in, maybe you want it to be plural, you could add in an S there so you can see that appear here as well. All right, that's really it for this visual. It's a pretty simple one. You can see you do have general settings. These are just the, regarding the position and the border that you have around it. You could even change things like the background if you wanted to. There's a few things you can kind of adjust in here, but not a ton that you really need to do with this visual. It's just a matter of putting in your category and then your value. This chart really does kind of feel like a, a combination between a tree map and maybe a waffle chart that you might have already seen in previous videos. 
as well. So it's a, it's a good little chart though. It's nice. Uh, again, I wish there was a little bit more interaction with the chart itself to other items, but it's a good little one. I think you guys will enjoy it. And yeah, that's it for this one. And uh, look forward to showing you our next custom visual in our next module.